and welcome to my channel. My name is Martine and if you are new here, I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly, but also with some tropical astrology insights and I focus on both relationship and natal astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to see more content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. Also, please comment in the comment section with anything that you would like to give as feedback for this video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. You can check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you. And also, I have started a tarot channel more recently than this channel. And I'm also going to be linking that in the video description. In case you like tarot, you might want to go ahead and check it out. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, maybe consider subscribing if you are interested in tarot. Thank you. So, today's video is going to be about... Transits for 2023. And as I said, I am starting with Aries. Because that was the first sign that I extracted among my ruffles so i'm going to start as usual with an introduction and this introduction is going to be the same for all of the videos in this series for 2023 so if you listen for it once then it will be the same for all of the videos in this series so mainly I'm going to start by saying that as I did, as I also mentioned last year, you can use this video, these videos with predictions for 2023 for your moon sign as well as for your ascendant sign. You probably remember that I mentioned that you can take your moon sign as ascendant and look at the rest of your planets from your moon sign and that is called a Chandra Lagna chart. <laughs> meaning literally taking the moon as an ascendant and looking at the rest of the placements from the moon. And especially if the moon in your horoscope, in your natal chart, is in a lower degree than uh, the ascendant or the lagna, it might be particularly relevant for you to look at the moon chart as opposed to the lagna chart. Both of them are important, though. It's just that in certain situations, the... Chandra Lagna or the Moon Lagna can be more important when it comes to predictions. Okay, <clears throat> that's something that I wanted to say. Also, I have divided the year into three main parts, as usual, with respect to transits. Now, in the first roughly two weeks of 2023, the placements will be basically very much the same as they were in the end of 2022 or as they are going to be at the end of 2022 so if you want to see your predictions you can just go back to my 2022 series and re-watch the chart three phase for the um you know ascendant that you have or the moon sign that you have in my videos for 2022 i'm gonna link the um, playlist for 2022 transits in this video description. So go ahead and watch that for the roughly two weeks, the first two weeks of 2023. So from January 1st until roughly January 14th, 2023, when Saturn is going to be in Capricorn. So the main divisions that I have looked at for 2023 are from roughly January 14th until April 19th, 2023, when Rahu is going to be in Aries, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces, Saturn is in Aquarius. The second chart is going to be when Rahu, from, sorry, from around April 19th until December 2nd, 2023, when Rahu is going to be in Aries, Jupiter is going to be in Aries, Saturn is going to be in Aquarius. And then the final um, section is going to be from December 2nd until the end of 2023, or roughly December 31st, 2023, when Rahu will be in Pisces, Jupiter in Aries, Saturn in Aquarius. So these are the three main sections that I will be looking at for all ascendants. 
And if you look at the chart, I have marked the planets. RA means Rahu, JU means Jupiter, SA means Saturn, KE means K2. And I will be marking the aspects for each of these with a different color. Yellow for Jupiter, red for Rahu or pink for Rahu, uh, gray for Saturn, and that's about it. Um, I haven't marked the K2 aspects because K2 is always opposite Rahu. Okay, <clears throat> so K2, just like Rahu and Jupiter, also aspects the 5th and the ninth houses from itself in addition to the house that it opposes. So this is just for you to know. But I haven't marked them, these aspects, K2's aspects on the chart, just to keep it, you know, simple. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to say as an introduction and now now i'm gonna get into the individual descriptions for the sign at hand welcome leo this is your reading for 2023 predictions for your ascendant and moon sign i do remind you once again that you can use this for both your moon sign and your ascendant sign especially if your moon sign is in a lower degree in your horoscope in any sign by comparison to the ascendant sign, then you are better off watching the moon sign predictions. For 2023, you might actually get more accurate predictions. And also, I want to issue this disclaimer once again that these are general predictions, so you do have to look at individual horoscopes because a lot of things are going to factor in. And another thing that I will remind you of is that the dates that I have written are estimative. And if you want to know exactly when a planet enters a particular sign, you have to do your chart, calculate your transits based on your geographical coordinates. Okay, so that being said, let me get straight into it. Chart 1, which is from around middle of January 2023 until April 19th, 2023. And this is when Rahu's in Aries, Jupiter in Pisces, Saturn is in Aquarius. <clears throat> so, this is pretty important for Leo Ascendant because Saturn going through the seventh house throughout the entire year means two main things. First of all, this is a good year to start a serious long-term relationship to meet someone with respect to starting a serious long-term relationship. Um, for those of you who are already in a relationship, this is a good time to get married. But this also simultaneously means that this year you will be working a lot towards your career goals because the seventh house is kind of like a um, um, higher version of the tenth house, so to speak. So it's like... Um, there's this concept in Vedic astrology, I think I have mentioned it many times before, called Bhavad Bhavam. So the ten the seventh house is the tenth house from the tenth house, which makes which makes it just as important maybe in some ways when it comes to career as the actual tenth house. So Saturn being there also shows that you will have to work hard. It's like on the one hand you will want to work hard with respect to your career goals, but on the other hand, you're also just gonna have to work hard. It's like you're not going to get things easily with respect to your job or your profession during this time when Saturn is in Aquarius, unless you really stick to the Saturnian ways of doing things, which is planning, management, uh, time management, organization, not leaving anything to chance, being disciplined, yada yada, all the stuff, all the Saturn stuff, right? Um, making the most of every opportunity and so on and so forth. But as long as you maintain steady effort, you should be seeing good results with respect to your professional life. And especially for those of you who are um, already working maybe in a hierarchical structure, especially a corporate environment, this could be a year when you will be favored for managerial positions or any kind of administrative job, basically. Now, Saturn is also aspecting the ninth house, and then you also have Rahu in the ninth house. So this shows two things, actually. One, the number one thing is wonderlust. So Rahu being in the ninth house definitely shows that, well, the, during this time, 
you're going to feel a very strong desire to travel. You really want to. You're probably going to have like itchy feet to go to places you haven't been before. You really want to see the world. There might be this really intense yearning with respect to ninth house issues. This could also show a strong interest in um, uh, studies, higher studies. You might be, for some of you, maybe going back to school. But the ninth house does connect mainly to higher education, which means pretty much PhD level or very specialized courses. The ninth house also has to do with things that have to do with religion, you know, spiritual teachings, philosophy, everything that has to do with like higher learning and how you see the big picture, how you think about life in general, your beliefs. So there will be a lot of interest in these areas during this time. So you might be reconsidering your beliefs. Oh, your beliefs, I think, are going to go back and forth. Like you might be going through F F religion, you know, like, uh, like F religion, I don't want to hear about it. Or you're going to be really turning against your religion of background, right? The religion of your ancestors and your family. Um, for se- But at the same time, you might feel drawn to learn more about religions in a weird way. Because, and this is also because Saturn is aspecting the ninth house. So it's like you're going to feel this really strong tug between, tug of war, basically, between a uh, tendency towards orthodoxy and sticking to whatever you, the belief systems of your family are. And on the other hand, trying alternative systems and new age stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And of course, you do have to look at, again, more individual placements to see how strong these aspects are and what else might be happening there. But I think for some of you, you might end up really, really... I think revolutionizing the way you see the world and your overall belief systems by the time that this transit ends, by the time both these transits end, Rahu in the Aries and also Saturn in Aquarius. Right, so um, aside from that, let me see. Oh, on a not so happy note, this could potentially show conflict with um, religious figures, could be conflict with mentors, teachers, your father figure, gurus, right? Anyone who's kind of like a, especially a paternal sort of figure, someone who is like higher on the hierarchy, someone you would normally listen to and uh, look up to, or someone that you is just your designated superior. So of course, this could also translate to the work environment. So be careful about that. There could be some competition and arguments happening with these people during this time. With respect to your relationship, there's going to be stability. Like, especially for those of you who are already in a long-term relationship, there will be stability, but not too much flashiness, not too much, like, um, romance and crazy, whatever. But there will be stability. There will be a sense of, like steadiness in the relationship like you can rely both you and your partner you you're gonna feel like you can rely on one another so yes there will be that and also durability it's very unlikely that you're going to be going through some kind of severe breakup during this time Uh, again unless it has been a long time in the making so definitely if you are or if you have been in a relationship between Uh, sorry, before Saturn entered Aquarius, that really did not support your higher path, that was, you know, basically someone who was just completely incompatible, let's say, but you stayed with them for various superficial reasons, then definitely during this time, you might end this relationship, because Saturn also rules the sixth house. Now, I did say mainly peace and quiet, but also since Saturn also rules the sixth house, you could also be having some bickering happening, some conflicts happening. But again, the intensity of these should be judged by other more personal aspects in the horoscope. Otherwise, can you can just, you know, this could be like minor annoyances with um with your long-term romantic partner jupiter going through the eighth house aspecting the second house um aspecting the fourth house 
especially Jupiter going through the eighth house, ruling the fifth and ruling the eighth house itself. Well, this basically shows that, well, number one, this is a good time for things like um, looking into investments, investment plans, especially joint ventures. If you have these together with your partner, this is also a good time for looking into loans. So if you have been thinking about getting a loan, um, especially for mortgage payments, this is a good time for this. You might be favored during this time. This also could just show you might be getting some windfall. So especially for those of you who have already been investing up until this point, you might be getting some gains from that during this time. Um, if you haven't started investing, this is a good time to invest. Now, I wouldn't really give the advice of, you know, get heavily into speculative ventures because you would really need to look at individual horoscopes uh, more in depth for that. But overall, this is like, let's say if you just want to participate in a ruffle, this is definitely, I would say, a good time for you to just have some fun for this or like play the lottery or something like that. You might actually win something. All right. Um, and this is also a good relation with your in-laws. So the family of your partner, your spouse or your long-term partner. And this is also, I feel like there's going to be some kind of a weird level of transformation happening. So it's really interesting because the Lord of the Eighth is in the Eighth House. So to me, this shows like a massive transformation. I feel like for most of you, this transformation has to do with your psychology for some, it could be about sexuality, but I think mostly it's about psychology. It's like something about your outlook, or you might achieve a better understanding of who you really are. This is definitely a good time to go to therapy. You might be getting a lot of gains from this, especially during this time. Like You might be lucky in finding the right therapist that is really going to help you progress during this time. If you have, especially if you have had issues with mental or emotional health before, this is also definitely a time when your intuition, your investigative abilities, um, your research abilities are going to be heightened. You know, you're really going to be having the necessary patience and determination to research things a lot more than usual. So this is especially true, again, since Jupiter is the great benefic. Uh, especially if you also happen to have Jupiter aspecting Venus, and I mean transiting Jupiter aspecting Venus in your horoscope, this could be a good time to get a job in research or some kind of a position connected to research. If, uh, no, sorry, I was going to say Jupiter aspects the 12th house, so this is weird. I mean, not weird, actually. It's, you know... Basically, aspecting the 12th house shows that, again, this is actually helping your mental health, really. So this shows that overall your mental health will be improving during this time by comparison to the previous phase. And because it's aspecting the water houses, which is all about the subconscious, it's all about the sensitivity, the emotions, the intuition. Of course, your intuition will be particularly valuable during this time. You could be getting a lot of insights, especially since Jupiter is ruling your fifth house. This shows connection between intuition and the subconscious and creativity. So it's very important that you get enough rest during this time because your mind, you, even you might actually get flashes of insights and creativity from your dreams during this time. And very, very heightened intuition overall. Like, even if you're someone who doesn't normally have a lot of intuition during this time, your intuition is going to really be boosted, highly sensitive. You might start to pick up things that you wouldn't normally have noticed. Um, you're going to be more sensitive to your surroundings. Of course, there are pluses and minuses to this, but definitely it shows you're going to have heightened sensitivity and intuition. If you already have placements in your horoscope that show you are this kind of a person, like an HSP, 
Um, this could show, like, you could even be bordering on psychic during this time. Like, you could be having some really intense flashes. I mean, not intense, maybe that's not the word. Like, really accurate flashes, let me put it like that, of insights with respect to different things. And this is also a great time to just get into anything connected to the 8th house, including tarot, astrology, psychology, anything that has to do with research, getting to the bottom of things investigative work you might suddenly find yourself drawn to you know um a lot of mystery research stuff like i don't know maybe even games and novels and stories that have to do with detective work and all this stuff and i think for some of you more specifically this is also a good time to work on healing any potential sexual issues that you might have and you're going to see an improvement with respect to that. Your intuition is further heightened by K2 going through the third house, actually. K2 is aspecting the seventh house. And Saturn. So to me, this actually shows during this time, your enemies are going to be kept in check. Um, to a large extent, they were kept in check also when Saturn was going through Capricorn, but in a much more kind of overt uh, material sort of way. But with K2 here, you, your enemies are literally going to dissolve. Like they're going to fade to nothing very slowly somehow. K2 there is going to... I don't know, just like basically basically make people stop heckling you or like stop the naysayers from giving you grief to a large extent. If you have had any conflicts, this is especially true. Kid to being in the third house, you might be um, to some extent, uh, and again, this is pretty specific, you might be more difficult to understand by others like your speech or your manner of communication could become a little bit more blurry than usual you need to be careful how you express yourself because you don't want people to misunderstand you ruler of let me think So, for some of you, you might, especially if this is reinforced in your individual horoscope, you could be meeting a romantic partner on a long-distance travel or a long-term travel. Because Jupiter is also looking at the second house, relations with your family of origin are going to be decent during this time. And this also just shows that this is a good time to work on any kind of psychological issues connected to your family of origin and the relationship with, relationship with them. This is actually really interesting because um, Rahu and Saturn aspecting the ninth house shows that there could be challenges with respect to travel, even though you feel a very strong desire to travel. So... Um, on the other hand, though, will you have Jupiter aspecting the 12th house and it's also sitting in the 8th house. So basically this shows that it's favorable for you to take long distance travels. So <laughs> it's like you might have problems if you are trying to travel within the same country or continent. But if you want to travel across the ocean you might have absolutely no problems, which I know sounds weird, but that's pretty much what shows up here. And I just want to say when I say problems with Saturn there, aspecting the ninth house, doesn't have to be like the most horrible problems ever, but they could be enough to create some stress and nuisance. Always remember that when Saturn touches something, it wants you to be as thorough as possible. So if you're talking about taking a trip, for example, 
that means not leaving anything to chance. Make sure you have the insurance. Make sure you take into account every potential scenario that could go wrong, which I know is exactly the opposite of what people who listen to The Secret are going to tell you. But trust me, with this <laughs> with this transit, you don't want to leave anything to chance. You want to consider anything that could go wrong and be prepared for it. Because otherwise, especially since Saturn is not your friend, being a Leo rising or a Leo moon, Saturn is your arch enemy. So <laughs> it's like uh, it will especially test its enemies. Let me put it like that. I speak from personal experience. You do not want to know how my Saturn transits have gone down in the past years. Um, right. Um. What else can I say? With respect to the home environment, so this is a, a good time with respect to the home environment. You could be putting in some efforts to improve your living space. You could becoming more. You could be becoming a little bit more minimalist, a little bit, and not. I don't, maybe minimalist is not the best word, but you're gonna become more aware of, you know, how much stuff you have in your house and. Maybe you will be going through a triage of like, do I need this? Do I need that? You know, and get rid of things that you don't really need. You're going to become more like focused on being simple and organized. And you're not going to stand clutter as much as usual. Be careful because there might be some issue concerning the mother figure. I'm, I don't think... Yeah, your mother could have some health issues during this time. So really be careful. I mean, if you are in a position where you can help, then you should help. Or it could be, yeah, mother figure, like I said. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the biological mother. It could be anyone that you see as a mother figure. And... This is also a good time for vehicles, like, um, if you want to choose a new vehicle or just anything, anything connected to vehicles, maybe take on a new vehicle, maybe get a driver's license or anything like that. This is, you're going to be favored, but you also have to work hard and be disciplined. So Rahu's aspect on the fifth house Shows that you're going to be more interested in kids than usual during this time. Because Rahu is about basically coveting things. And the fifth house is children. It also, the fifth house is also about hobbies and leisure time and, you know, doing what you love. So you might be finding yourself, um, you know... Taking a lot more time with your hobbies, you know, just doing things because you enjoy doing them as opposed to doing things because you expect some kind of a result in the long term. Um, this also just shows you're going to be like thinking about kids, like maybe some of you who haven't had kids up until this point and maybe you were OK with not having kids. You might be thinking maybe I would like one during this time. And of course, be careful that it's not just a passing phase because that's what Rahu does. Is you know, basically showing you things from the bright and shiny side so that it makes you really excited to go for everything that is new and interesting. <clears throat> you do have ruler of the sixth and the seventh aspecting the ascendant. And also Rahu aspecting, which is the co-ruler of the seventh. So... This could literally be that you're going to meet someone important, I think, for, I mean, for many of you, it could be. But again, you do have to look at other more personal transits as well, especially if you are single. That's what I mean. Um, you could be meeting someone important during this time for a potential long-term relationship. This also can show that you're going to be... Um, Having more people watching you. 
because seventh house is the house of audience to some extent. But it could also be that you might have to deal with some health problems. And since you have, like, again, it depends on what else is going on in your horoscope to a large extent. But having the ruler of the sixth aspecting the ascendant, again, could be some health problems, could be something connected to um, intestines, mental health, or the brain, the nervous system the feet to mainly and of course saturn also rules bones and teeth and i don't know if you've watched my community tab and uh yes i also said that i have ascendant in leo and i recently had to have an sudden um implant as in i had to have an extraction and then an implant and i say sudden because i basically cracked my tooth in half because I ate a whole grain bread, slice of bread. So, yeah, I am actually joked about it that I should have just t- uh, stuck with uh, chicken wings and I would still have a tooth right now. But And th- the funny part was that literally as soon as Saturn hit Aquarius this year, I had this incident where I broke a tooth. Yeah, just my luck. Um <laughs> Also, can I just say this kind of not directly related, not to just Leo, but again, since Leo, you are the arch enemy of Saturn. Saturn is going to be particularly tough on you, and you it's good to know that you might encounter problems with things that are um, contained bodies of water. So if you're dealing, I, this could even be like, I don't know, the toilet, uh, I don't know what it's called, like the basically the water reservoir above the toilet, even that could be a a contained body of water. But of course, Aquarius mainly refers to things like fish tanks, ponds, and a, a whole bunch of stuff. Like I personally went through an entire saga involving fish tanks in the past couple of years since Saturn has been going through Aquarius and then, um, Capricorn as well, which is the sixth house, which was going through the sixth house for Leo rising, which is the house of pets. But yeah, I won't dwell on my drama. Just putting it out there because this is not um, the best um, time for fish tanks. If you're thinking about that as a hobby or again, could be swimming pools, all kinds of anything that involves, you know, contained water, contained bodies of water, even lakes, ponds, stuff like that could be incidents connected to that. Right, so, yes, that's something to look at as well. And, um, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much what I can say, actually, for the chart one phase. Um, and now let me look at the chart two phase, which is going to be most of the year from around April 19th until December 2nd, 2023. Rahu is with Jupiter together in Aries in the ninth house. So this is probably going to be the best time for you to actually take a trip because the great benefic is falling into the ninth house, which means to a large extent the potentially negative consequences of Saturn and Rahu aspecting the ninth house are going to be mitigated. And um, yes... However, bear in mind that Jupiter still rules the 8th house, so you could be looking at some kind of a transformation happening with respect to the ninth house. And, of course, transformation does not necessarily just refer to travels. It could be with respect to your mentality and your belief systems, like I mentioned for the chart 1 phase. This is going to be a prosperous time financially maybe even more so compared to the chart one phase because Jupiter rules the fifth is going into the ninth. I forgot what these are called. They, I think it's called Don Yoga, but I'm not 100% sure. There are certain combinations between houses that are said to be wealth inducing and create opportunities for wealth. But again, to see exactly how strong this is, you would have to look at individual chart placements 
But yes, technically this is a good position. You can expect maybe sudden windfalls or you're going to be making more money than usual. This is also a great time for things to do with publishing and traveling together with a significant other. And again, for some of you, this could be meeting someone, a significant other, through traveling. But you would have to see that this theme also exists in the individual horoscope. I mean, the theme of meeting your significant other while traveling. You have also have Jupiter aspect in the third house, which shows increase in optimism. K2 is still going to be in a third house, which means the increase of intuition is there. Unfortunately, though, and this is something that I should have mentioned for the chart one phase as well, K2 being in the third house basically shows that you may be kind of um, lacking in the willpower department, basically. Unless it's something that you really, really care about on a spiritual plane that makes sense to you from a spiritual perspective, or it's something to do with research, you're really going to be having a hard time disciplining yourself to get stuff done. But again, as usual, this does also depend on what else is happening in your horoscope. If you have Saturn in the third house, you're probably not going to have much of a problem. Although even with Saturn in the third house natally, you might still realize that you, it's becoming harder for you to focus on your uh, or becoming clearer with respect to your goals during this time. Because K2 there is going to basically make you take it easy and be like, you know, stop working so hard, just enjoy the ride, that kind of a, a vibe. And also K2 is a very spiritual energy, so you're going to want to feel like your goals are actually maybe serving a higher purpose or they have some kind of a spiritual meaning. And the ruler of the fourth house and the third Basically also shows your happiness during this time, actually. So again, this is for the whole time when Ketu is in Libra. So the chart one and chart two phases. Um, your happiness, to a large extent, will come from intellectual pursuits, um, maybe reading, cultivating yourself. Also, short distance travels. This could just be you know, as simple as, I don't know, traveling, I, I mean, walking around your neighborhood or just going to events in your city uh, or short trips like day trips, you know, or like maybe weekend getaways. Um, also, you're just going to be, you know, hair happiness is also going to be coming from just staying active on a day to day basis, basically, at, at least a little bit active. But also, it will come from spiritual pursuits, definitely. Meditation is also recommended. You're going to have a very active imagination and also a very active intuition. Like I said, some of you might become borderline psychic during this time. But again, you have to look at the whole chart. Right. And now you have Saturn and Rahu and Jupiter aspecting the first house. So Jupiter ruling the 8th house can show some kind of a transformation happening with respect to 1st house matters. So this could be a bunch of things, right? And like I mentioned before, Saturn does rule bones and teeth and stuff, so it could even be connected to that. But mostly something to do with your uh, physical body, your head, especially the head area, but actually your overall health because, you know, Saturn rules the 6th house. So this could just show that you might be going through some kind of a transformation with respect to your physical health and your body and your vitality, most likely for the better because Jupiter is there. And also there will be, again, more opportunities for you to shine when it comes to creative pursuits, hobbies, creative pursuits, things you do for fun. This is an even stronger time for many to think about children and maybe to have children. And certainly if you desire to have children, this is definitely a good time for you to get pregnant. At least again, with respect to these transits. 
Saturn will be aspecting the fourth house. Um, what I said with respect to the chart one phase still stands. Well, it will stand actually for the duration of this year because Saturn will stay in Aquarius. And also everything I said about Saturn in Aquarius is still going to stand. You need to watch out for incidents involving fish tanks, ponds, any kind of contained bodies of water, even swimming pools, right? Um, but also you need to watch for your mother's health because there, because there might be some issues during this time. Also, Saturn going through the fourth, I mean, aspect in the fourth house alone is definitely going to make you become even more focused on decluttering and just, you know, sticking to the bare basics when it comes to your home environment. You're going to want to keep it simple. So yeah, this is pretty much what I can say. Also, with respect to Jupiter and Rahu, just everything is going to be true uh, for what I said about Rahu. And yes, especially Rahu being in the ninth house in the first chart phase. And all the positive aspects of that are going to be amplified, actually, because Jupiter is the great benefic. So a lot of the negative aspects, like I said, are going to be mitigated. So this is definitely a great time to travel long term, to focus on higher education or learning new things, expanding your knowledge, um, maybe dealing with people from foreign cultures. And again, this is a good time to relate to um, teachers, mentors, maybe spiritual teachers as well, and father figures or even authority figures or superiors at work. All right, so this is pretty much what I can say of also about the chart two phase. Now, chart three phase, which is actually going to last considerably longer than the 31st of December, but I'm only going to do the analysis up until the 31st of December 2023. And as you can see, Rahu will be moving into Pisces, leaving Jupiter alone in Aries. That is the main change. Saturn stays in Aquarius. So... Ketu will be falling into the second house, which shows distance from the family of origin. Since Jupiter is still in the ninth, this could literally mean for some of you that you might be going through some long distance travel away from your family of origin, away from your place of origin. Um, it also could show just that mentally, emotionally, you are feeling distant from your family of origin. This is not a great time with respect to signing contracts when it comes to things like joint finances, insurance, anything that is kind of like a financial deal. Not a great idea because Rahu's sitting alone in the 8th house. So this could mean higher chances of getting swindled. You're going to have a tendency to just, you know, think that everything that glitters is gold. So be really careful that, you know, if you sign any contract, especially when it has to do with a bank or, you know, like I said, loans, finances, stuff like that, you need to be careful that, you know, it doesn't sound like it's too good to be true. Because if it does sound too good to be true, most likely it is. Jupiter aspecting the fifth house, again, this is a good time to conceive for those of you who would like to have children. This is also a good time for romance. And, of course, I should have said this also for the chart 2 chart, yes, uh, for the chart 2 phase as well, that Jupiter being in Aries actually is increasing the chances of meeting someone significant if you haven't already met someone. So if you're looking to meet someone with respect to um, forming a long-term romantic partnership because you have both Saturn and Jupiter Aspecting the romance houses and the marriage houses because the ninth house is also the marriage house. Yes, because that's why the Navamsha is, you know, an expansion of the ninth house. Uh, it's like a, my, it's like an a, an analytical view of the ninth house. That's what the, the Navamsha is because the ninth house is connected to marriage. It's a religious ritual for most people. That's how it started out to be, and yeah. So this is a good time to meet someone. 
And with respect to your home, again, you're going to be sticking to a tendency to be decluttered and simple, maybe even minimalist. And also on top of that, you might have a strong desire to um, bring in some kind of foreign elements within the home, like parts of different cultures. For some of you, this could also mean that you might want to um, have things that smoke in your house, like uh, incense and stuff because of the Rahu influence. And also this could mean, for some of you very specifically, that you might be moving in with your long-term partner. If you have been involved with some, or if you have, let's say, been checking out someone from a distance, or if you have been already talking to someone online, this might be a time when this person might come over to visit you. But again, this is pretty specific. It's not, obviously, it's just for a, a few people. you're definitely going to be more optimistic. Again, not only optimistic, but you're going to be in continuation with the first uh, first and second house themes. You're going to be very research-oriented during this year. Like, your mind is really going to be focused on getting to the bottom of things. And again, there is that same theme of being interested in the occult, in mysteries, mysticism, yeah, very research oriented. And of course, this could mean for some of you very specifically that you are going to do well in fields of psychology or anything that has to do with like research and investigation. Again, you could ironically you could have chances of windfall financially as well um especially again if you have invested up until this point especially actually you know and again i don't want to encourage high risk activity but actually this could show a gain from stuff like uh, the stock market or any kind of speculative gain actually this is also a good time for education, so even college level and above, so starting education, finishing education, anything to do with education and universities is going to be favored during this time. Yeah, so this is pretty much what I can see for the chart three phase as well. So this has been pretty much it, and I hope that you have enjoyed it, Leo. And if you have, do not forget to click on the notifications bell, uh, subscribe to my channel, like the video, also comment in the comment section if you would like to comment anything about this reading or any, if you have suggestions for future videos, of course, I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you are interested in a personal astrology consultation. I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. You can check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you and I hope to see you at the next video on my channel. Bye!